Hi, folks. I want to show you this program I wrote called Bash Cly ZT. It's a set of Bash scripts that allow you to run your own zero tier controller, self hosted. So you don't have to use their platform or their web interface to set up your networks and manage networks. So that's part of the zero tier uh, package or, and, and philosophy. It's open source. So you download it, you run your own controller. Now, you do use their root servers in order to find the zero tier um, server that's closest to you to route traffic and for it to store metadata like your public keys and the um, IPs of your client so it knows how to get back and forth. Now what's important to understand though is by default zero tier will try to find the fastest route so it doesn't route your traffic through its servers it tries not to it tries to do point to point so when I connect to my server. So here's my two nodes. This is a LXC container, and this is a host I have out on the public internet. And when these hosts communicate via zero tier, it tries to communicate point to point directly. So it's because it's faster. Now, if there was some network configuration that prevented uh, it from punching a hole through point to point, then it would route traffic through its servers. But just be aware that the um, traffic from between clients or, and nodes on your LAN are all encrypted. So they still can't see your traffic. Um, and I'll do a traffic analysis video to show you how that works and how that looks to demonstrate that. So there's a other, another project called ZT and GUI. And if you prefer a GUI based um, interface to manage and you know have a self hosted zero tier controller, then you can use this by all means. The only feature it doesn't have is the ability to modify your flow rules. So one thing you can do is use um, a JSON program to uh, and, and study the format and add rules to it. But that's something I did add to my program. So I'm going to go ahead and download this script. And here is my uh, controller. Now your self-hosted controller, it doesn't even need to be up and running all the time. It's really only used to help to, to join nodes or peers. I keep going back and forth with that term. I need to be consistent. <laughs> join nodes to your, your LAN. So I'm going to download this here. And just be sure when you install that you have the prerequisites, curl, JQ, appy, calc, and that should take care of it. All right. So I'm going to unzip to this. And it creates the directory structure. So when I cd to bash izt, and you don't need to be the root user to execute this. You just need to be a user that can run the program. So if you're a non-root user, you can just type bash ct networks like that, and that brings up the menu, and you navigate it using the options and numeric options here, or the options you see in the brackets. So first, if I do five list networks, there's no networks to connect to because I haven't created one yet. But my self-hosted controller, you know, my initial development of this was all on a Chromebook using the Linux uh, virtual machine with it, built within it. And I, so, I, you know, <laughs> you, you, your, your, your self-hosted controller can be a Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Zero or some device that, that you want to use for the controller, okay? And we just saw there are no networks here. So let's go ahead and create a network. This is my test ZT network. And I'm just going to allow it to auto generate an IP range. Um, oops, I didn't hit the uh, I Z T my test. ZT network, oh shoot, ZT network, there we go. Don't let it auto generate a range. There's my network ID. You're going to need this for your peers because they're going to join it based on this ID here. Okay. And whenever you create a new network, by default, it's going to be private, which means that users have to know what your network ID is before they can join it. Okay, enter here. And here it auto generate it. This is what API, API Calc does for you. It auto generates a network. And when I 
save the settings. And no errors here, so this is good. So peers can now join um, the network. And I hit five to list networks. And you can see there's my zero tier network. And here is the range starting at one up to 200, uh, 254. All right. So now let's look at adding peers to the network. When you, oh, I, I did that without telling you, you know, exactly what I did. <clears throat> my apologies. Let me go back. Type three <laughs> to go to the network three to manage peers. And then you're going to get a list of all your networks. And in this case, we have one. So I just type one there. And if I try to list peers, I have no, no peers there. And I have no authorized peers or authorized peers. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to join this network with my two peers. All right. Now these are geographically separated. This is running in a Linux container and this is a public accessible and you can see the IP address for this host is on a private network it is netted within my public LXC uh, my public server but the two servers are geographically separated I think this is I don't know uh, East Coast somewhere and then this one I think is in California if I'm not mistaken all right so now I'm going to go back I'm going to get my network ID. All right. And then I'm going to go zero tier by join and my ID. And again, I'm, I'm just using Linux for quickly demonstrating. But zero tier works on a variety of operating systems. Windows has a GUI that you can use to join. And you just copy and paste or type in the network ID. So I just joined these two to my network. And if I go to unauthorized peers, I have these two peers here. Because by default, when someone joins your network, because it's set to private by default, they have to be authorized to join. And you want to be sure that you know the client ID before you authorize it, just so you don't you know, authorize a rogue device. So you can see this matches number one. And zero tier cli status here matches the node id so i'm going to type one here i'm going to type one and then i hit two to list i'm sorry three to list authorized peers you can see this host is now authorized to the network and it should have this ip address and if i check the ips you can see there's the ip address right there which is auto assigned by zero tier. And I go to list unauthorized peers. You can see now I have my last one here. Hit one. And now if I list peers, I'll give it a moment there. It, it may take a moment just to get an IP address. There it goes. And there's my other IP. Okay. So it, it may just take a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a few seconds to negotiate an IP address, but that's totally normal. All right. I go to one to list all peers and you see that's my peers here. So if I had, you know, 10 peers, I can click on or hit this right here, number one, to show me all my peers that are authorized. And you can unauthorize peer and you can also delete a peer, which means it's not going to show up in any any of the list here. Okay. But when you unauthorize a peer, it's going to be put back into the unauthorized peer. So let me just show you that real quick. So I hit four to unauthorize a peer. And let's just do one. Here, I go to list only authorized peers. You see, I only have one in my list now. If I go here to IPA. E, yes, right. Um, so this host can no longer communicate with the network. Let's just test that. Ping 192.168.24.234.236, sorry. Something like that. See, it can't communicate with this peer because it doesn't exist anymore. All right. 
So uh, it exists, it's just not authorized. Excuse me, I apologize for that, it's not authorized. So I'm gonna leave this ping running and then I'm going to authorize this peer. So three, and then, oops, uh, there's unauthorized peers too. One moment, and now you see the pings are now working. All right, and let me be sure I can ping one or two, one, six, eight, dot two, one, four, dot uh, two, three, four. So I'm going to ping from here to this host now. There we go. So the nice thing about zero tier, very quick, very easy, very simple to set up. Once you have a peer that joins the network, then depending on the flow rules or the firewall rules you have in place, they can see each other. So this is behind a NADET host, this container, but I can very easily communicate out to it. And also this public host can communicate directly to this uh, container on a private network. That's the beauty of zero tier. It's a global area network <laughs> to allow you to bring in distributed hosts into um, one land, flat land. Okay, so let's go back here. And now I'm gonna explain how you can edit flow rules. This is what allows you to add firewall rules to your network. So even though you may have, you know, I don't know, a hundred peers on one network with zero tier, and I don't have it in this, this current version, you can set up VLANs so that 10 hosts are on one VLAN and the other 90 hosts are on a separate LAN, this theoretically. Or you can set up, you know, multiple VLANs. I just don't have that capability, but you can do that with zero tier. So even though you have one network, for example, you can still separate and isolate those to a specific LAN and apply specific flow rules or firewall rules to that as well. All right, so now I'm going to edit rules, flow rules right here, number four. And your list of networks will be here so you can select the one that you want to add the rules for. I go to type one. And by default, you're gonna have this uh, template here that shows you the format for the rules, all right? And by default with zero tier, even via their web interface, all traffic is allowed and all these protocols here are allowed as well. And if you don't want or don't use IPv6, then you can just comment IPv6 out, for example, because my rules are really not set up for IPv6 yet. It just supports IPv4 right now. And, you know, I should have chosen a better delimiter besides colons now I think about it. Well, I've thought about that before, but anyway. So I don't want IPv6. And all you gotta do now is follow these this format to add or remove uh, firewalls, firewall rules. So I'm gonna install, oh, I have SSH installed on this system here, yeah. So I'm going to SSH to 168 214.236. You see that's a prompt there. I'm not going to log in. I'm just going to show you how the flow rules work. I can SSH from my container here over to my public system via the zero tier network. All right. So I'm going to drop TCP colon port 22. That's all you got to do. Just follow the examples that I have here in this template. You, you can do source and destination and things of that nature as well, all right? And then I'm going to control X to save that. No, no, all right. I think I made a mistake there. I just saw it, sorry. Let's comment that out to show you how you can comment out protocols. Let's drop colon TCP colon destination port 22. There we go. We want to control X. Modify buffer. Yes. It changes. Yes. 
And what it does here is it prints out the the role in the JSON format that zero tier uses by default. Okay. So you can just scroll through and and look at the capabilities and look at the the format that was that was added there. All right. And you can see here is the rule to drop 22 right there. OSSH. All right. And there's a protocol six. All right. And then down here it has rule committed. And be sure to test. <laughs> All right. Anytime you implement a firewall rule, you always want to be sure it works. So I'm going to try to SSH. Oops, you know, that's that's not going to work. I'm sorry. I forgot I had that on a different port number. Let me edit this. See, I went back here. I edited my rule. There we go. Yes. That. And yes. There we go. Scroll up. See, that's my 1022. All right. Now, you see, I now can no longer SSH. So that's how you can add in your your rules, firewall rules. Okay. And if you have multiple routes, or correction, if you have multiple nodes, you can use a zero tier node as a gateway to another network if you so choose. And number six, this is where you would manage those routes if necessary. Um, there are some a couple of advanced options that you can enable if you want to pursue that. Um, you can check out the documentation on their website. And you can update your, <clears throat> like if you want to choose a different IP address range, let's say this conflicts with the a range that you have on a remote network, otherwise you want to run into routing issues, then you could completely change the network IP assignment. Update the description, and you can delete a zero tier network as well. All right, so this is my bash cli ZT program that, that we wrote and that I created to allow someone to host their own zero tier controller. So let me edit the rule. I'm going to now, <clears throat> excuse me, remove this or comment this out. Go X to save it. Yes. Enter. It changes. Yes. All right. And now that rule is gone. It's no longer in the list here. So now, see, I got my prompt. So zero tier is very powerful. You can um, put in rules here so that if you want to have like a, a game server, that you want to host on your private network, then you can do that. And then you can put in a rule that only allows specific users access or correction. Um, those nodes that connect, you can, you can force them to use a specific port. And any other port they try, then you can by all means um, drop that as well. And within the documentation here in this template, it explains to you the different rules that you can, you can um, uh, enable. For example, if you want to drop all traffic, then you can modify the rules here so that only a specific tra traffic is allowed. Change the default of SEP to drop, for example. Okay. And then you have to put in explicit rules <laughs> to allow users to, to connect back and forth. Just be aware of that. All right. Okay. So if you have any questions, let me know. If uh, any features you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, I want to, you know, extend this. I am uh, about to start teaching and doing a research and working on my, my dissertation. So my availability may be limited, but I will get back to you regarding, uh, you know, feature requests and things of that nature. I'm going to need a break from all the writing I'm going to be doing the next several months. So <laughs> happy to extend and build on to this this program. So if you'd like to see anything else, please let me know. And I hope you um, have an opportunity to use this, uh, my program and you know, contribute code or provide suggestions, any issues and bugs you find. I'd appreciate that. All right. Well, thanks folks. And um, I hope that you will make use of it. Okay.